Let's go against the flow. Against the flow. Hi guys, it's me, Jordan. So today I want to share to you some heart matters. Sa isang uh, celebration ng kasalan, hindi ba ang laging sinasabi sa mga newlyweds? Congratulations! Because it was such a special occasion. But I want to say today, bakit kaya hindi din natin gawin yun sa mga single? Because singleness is also something to be celebrated. Kaya sino yung mga single dyan? Taas ang mga kamay. Let me see those emojis. Okay, yan. May papatok pang nagtumunog dito. <laughs> yes, I see those hands. Okay, thank you. If you're single, I want to say to you, congratulations! Siguro okay lang kung yung iba sa inyo naiingit sa mga may jowa. Kesa naman sa may jowa ka tapos naiingit ka sa mga single. We're gonna talk about your heart. Okay? Kamusta naman yung mga puso nyo? Alam nyo, mga singles, ito ang tamang time para alagaan nyo yan. I want to read to you a verse that is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Bakit kaya sinabi sa Bible na bantayin natin yung ating mga puso? And guarding our hearts means to be wise and discerning in our lives. Guarding our hearts means protecting ourselves as Christians from all the things that will come to harm us. So today, I want to say, please be careful with your heart. I want to tell you three things today on bakit kailangan mong gawin yun and how. First off, your heart is of great worth. You know, I was throwing the garbage the other day and it got me thinking. The trash that I take out, okay lang na iwanan ko yan sa kalye. Kasi wala naman magnanakaw niyan eh. Or wala naman siguro magbabalak niyan. Because it's of no value. Now, if you think about your heart, you can't just treat it like your garbage that you just leave out there and then anyone can come along and take it. Dapat bantayin mo yan because that's of great value. Binikin ka ng Lord niyan. Napaka halaga po niyan. It's treasure. Kaya kailangan natin ingatan. I mean, iwasan din natin yung mga sakit sa puso. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to love with caution. Huwag tayo padalos-dalos at baka mahawa tayo sa mga worldly virus Ngayong pandemic, meron tayong mga pinafollow na protocols. And we need to follow also godly protocols if we want to make sure that our heart is healthy. Siguro kailangan din natin enhance yung ating quarantine sa mga puso sa mga panahon na ito. Kasi may kumakalat din na virus. Alam niyo ang tawag ko dito? Jowang Jowana virus. Ang scientific term ko nga dito, ako yung whistleblower, it's called Malan disease. Mm-hmm. And uh, kung ang COVID may itchiness of throat, ang land disease, itchiness of heart naman. And ayaw natin ng landi. Pipiliin natin yung love because yung love yung legit at orig. You have to think about guarding your heart talaga. And you cannot fall asleep. Like this guy right here. O oh, ba naging bantay pa siya tapos tutulogan lang pala niya yung work niya. You have a responsibility to stay awake and make sure you don't fall asleep. At uh, may magnakaw ng iyong puso. In the game of basketball, they say that defense wins championships. So offense can win you games, but the defense, that's what wins the championships. At alam nyo, gusto nyo maging panalo sa love life, kailangan muna tayo matuto ng depensa. Yung tamang depensa, okay? The second thing is that your heart is vulnerable. When Solomon says to guard your heart, he implies that you are living in a combat zone, one in which there are casualties. The enemy uses all kinds of weapons to attack us in the heart, and your heart is under constant attack. The number one most tinitira ng kaaway sa mga kabataan or mga singles, yung heart natin. Pag sinabi natin guard, it means to guard diligently against the enemy or to regulate with careful discipline or to maintain with proper supplies. We live in a world of follow your heart. Pero kung susundin natin ang sinasabi ng Biblia kesa sa mga sinasabi ng kanta, here's what the Bible says. Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. So who can understand it? So you can see dito na we shouldn't be following our hearts. Mm-hmm. The heart is not a leader that you would want to follow. 
a lot of us are faced with this decision. It's a tough decision then. Kung pipili natin yung ating puso or ang ating mga ulo. But you know what? I heard someone once say that there's a reason why God created us with the brain placed above the heart. Kasi kailangan natin gamitin yung isip natin. Ito yung kailangan magmaniobra or magsteer ng ating heart. And hindi natin pwedeng pagpalitin yung heart sa kayong brain natin. So as you can see, the heart, kung ano nung ginagawa nito, napaka-reckless din niya. No? My friend Pastor Lou De La Torre came up with this nice cycle of heartbreak. So maybe it starts with minadali, tapos sinikreto, tapos hindi tamang proseso, tapos hindi naman tama yung courtship, and then nasaktan. I went through this before and I said to myself, you know what, if I want to see a different outcome, I better start doing things differently the next time. So kung kayo, sawang-sawa na kayong masaktan, maybe kailangan nang ibahin yung discarte or yung approach when it comes to this. Ah, ang tawag ko nga dito, puso why. Yung kapag mas sinusunod mo yung heart mo kesa sa Lord mo, no? Kailangan kasi yung kahit jowang-jowa ka na, si Lord pa rin yung nasusunod kung talagang follower ka niya. The heart is always in a hurry. And it cannot be like that with love. Kasi pagdating sa love, we all know in 1 Corinthians 13 that it says that it is patient. So dapat willing to wait. Kapag ako'y nasa restaurant at ako'y order ng food, madalas kong marinig yun na sinasabi sa akin, Sir, willing to wait. Tapos sasabihin sa akin kung ilang minutes. And I'm willing to wait because I know whatever I ordered is worth it. Dapat kasi ang treatment natin sa love, para siyang fine dining, hindi fast food. Huwag niyong tratuhin na parang value meal yan. Sino sa inyo, you're gonna get all dressed up and then when you get to the fine dining restaurant, sabi ng waiter, table for two, tapos sabi mo, no, I'm doing a takeout. I don't think there are any takeouts in those kinds of restaurants because the whole purpose behind it is the experience. Now, it's so difficult to wait in our day of time, no? Because everything is instant. Instant coffee, instant noodles, instant messaging. Kaya yun tuloy, yung iba, nakakaroon pa ng instant baby. Huwag kayong maglala. Ang love naman, wala namang expiry date yan. Hindi yan nabubulok. Hindi naman kayong mag end up kagaya ni ate dito sa picture na to, no? So, if you're gonna love, love with patience. Waiting for and discerning the right person and the proper timing. Siguro may magsasabi, ano naman masama kung ako'y iibig? Wala naman wrong sa pag-ibig. Ang kadalasan pong wrong ay yung timing. Mm-hmm. Isipin nyo lang, if there were more waiting, there would be less disaster. Less broken-hearted, less yung mga pagsisisi, less yung mga hugot or yung mga unwanted pregnancies, bitterness, mga rant, at kung ano pang kabitera nakikita natin sa Twitter. If you look in the Bible, lahat ng mga pinagintay ng Lord, sina Joseph, Abraham, Moses, even Jesus, they all reaped a good result for their waiting. And so if God is making you wait, then you must be in good company. Hi, this is Jonah San Diego and I go against the flow. So what do you do while waiting? Of course you pray, you serve the Lord, you study, you get busy. You guard your hearts, you flee from sexual sins, and you be faithful to God. Marami ang gusto nila ng godly relationship. Pero nagsisimula ito sa godly singleness. Dapat intayin yung tamang panahon because ang tamang panahon ay yung timing ng Panginoon. Kung ang COVID may bagong variant, narinig nyo din, siguro ang malang disease meron din. Anong tawag ko dito? Marupok marilyosis. Ano naman yung symptoms nun, Dok? Ito yun, masyadong mabilis ma-attract. Tinabihan lang, tumibok na agad. nag lang, kinilig na. Or nag-wave lang sa messenger, no? Inasar lang ng friends, pero nag-fall na. Friendly lang, nilagi lang ng meaning. Tinawag lang sa phone, dun pa sinagot. As in, sagot na matamis na oo, hindi hello. May nag-joke lang, full mint na. Ito, nag-holding hands lang sa prayer meeting. Pero ito seryoso, nagbibingi-bingihan kapag pinagsasabihan, ayo paawat kahit hindi na tama, ang lambot ng puso, ang tigas naman ng ulo. If symptoms persist, please see your pastor. May mga tao talaga na sobrang brittle ang kanilang mga puso. 
Alam niyo yung masandal tulog? Meron naman masandal hulog ang puso. Nagpo-fall na agad. And you know, we could all learn a lesson from the trucks that we see sa mga streets. Nabasa niyo na ba ito sa isa sa mga trucks na bumabiyahe sa kalye? That's a wonderful lesson. My father always told me that if there was an accident at binunggo ng nasa likod yung nasa unahan, ang laging may sala or kasalanan yung nasa likod. Bakit? Because yung driver sa harap, wala naman siyang mata sa likod. So yung responsible yung nasa likod. Ganun ka rin. You are responsible for your actions and for your heart. Huwag ka na masyadong magdedikit kasi kung masyadong malapit, mahirap na makapreno. So kung ayaw mo magkasakit, huwag ka na masyadong magdedikit. Kung ayaw mo masaktan, huwag mong bilisan dahil ang tunay na pagmamahalan nagsisimula po yan sa dahan-dahan. Ang isa sa mga big tips nila sa mga nagbamaneho is you drive defensively para iwas si disgrasya. Kailangan talaga ng tamang depensa. Hindi lang sa sports, hindi lang sa pag-drive, pero para din sa ating mga puso. Naalala niyo yung game na ito? Yung Flappy Bird? Well, parang puso din yan. Flappy Heart. Yung madikit lang nagpo-fall na. Huwag ganun karupok. Yung iba kasi pag kinilig, hindi na nakikinig. Ang yun mahirap. So, huwag kang maging pok maru dahil kailangan din maging wrong maru. Habang single ka is a good time to learn what love really is. Kailangan mong pag-isipan at ipag-pray talaga na yung partner mo ay yung lalago ka sa Lord, hindi yung lalayo ka sa Lord. Kasi yung iba pa nagmadali, hindi na inisip kung ito ba'y makakasakit sa kanilang spiritual life, if this will sabotage their relationship with God. Dapat kasi ka on fire mo, yung maging ka on mo. At kung hindi, wag na lang. I-set mo na talaga yung standards mo. Hindi lang basta Christian dapat. Dapat mature. Hindi yung nakikita mo lang sa church. Dapat nakikita rin yung church sa kanya. So, hindi ko mat-Christian siya na. At kung hindi kanya kayang hintayin, hindi kanya kayang mahalin. May nagsabi sa akin one time, paano po kung dumating na yung right one pero wrong time? Kapatid, the right person will not contradict the right time. Package po yun. And you are worth the wait. Don't forget that it's not about finding the right person. It's also about being the right person. One time, may nagpapaalam sa akin, humingi ng payo. Nung kamustahin ko, kamusta naman yung girl? Sabi niya, opo, mature po siya. Eh, parang siya hindi. Sabi ko, baka naman siya nga yung tama para sa'yo, pero ikaw naman yung hindi tama para sa kanya. Kasi mahalaga din yung pareho ko yung tama para sa isa isa at hindi lang yung basta meron kong tama sa kanya. Ang love life dapat nakaka-bless, hindi nakaka-stress. And you can think about this three ways at least. Number one, kung single ka, huwag ka ma-stress masyado. Number two, kung ikaw ay in a relationship, huwag kayo masyado mag-stressan sa isa't isa. At pangatlo, dapat yung mga ibang tao, nabibless sila, hindi yung nasi-stress sila sa nakikita nila sa mga posts nyo at pag magkasama kayo. If you really want to learn on romance, you look in the book of Romans, chapter 12. And it says, you offer your bodies as living sacrifices. So, yung puso mo, kasama na sa body yun, syempre. And then you offer it to God as a living, pleasing sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You will not conform to the patterns of this world, but you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will know what God's will is. Yung good, pleasing, and perfect. So, marami nagtatanong, paano ko malalaman kung siya na? Paano ko malalaman kung God's will? It's right there. But you will not know unless you really offer everything to the Lord. Kaya habang single, kailangan happily in love ka sa Lord. Mm-mm. Yung tipong sobrang in love ka sa Kanya, hindi mo ramdam yung iyong pagiging single. You have to love this season talaga. Enjoy singlehood and maximize yung time mo with family and serving God. Not that when you're in a relationship now or married, you're not going to do that. No, but you you are doing it as early as now para when you're there, you can do it together. Sani puwersa. Okay? Just like a salmon up the river, I shall go against this stream. Sin! Hi, we are Christ of Farai. And this is against the flow. Yo, that is the way to go. Now, let me go ahead and ask you this question. Bakit single ka pa? Hmm. Let me give you three good reasons. Number one, God is protecting you. Maybe if you have plans that will break you, God will break those plans. Because rushing can be destructive. So you take your time, don't panic, 
Be willing to wait even if it hurts. Konting tiis lang. May nagsabi sa akin na, na heartbroken at masyado niya minadali yung relasyon. Sabi ko, oh, kamusta ka naman ngayon? So, nung time na to, broken hearted siya. Sabi niya, okay lang naman po ako, kuya. Um, nasaktan pero may natutunan. Sabi ko sa kanya, the thing is, hindi mo na kailangan masaktan para matuto. Kung pwede ka naman matuto bago masaktan. Remember, your heart is not a crash test dummy. So, kapag sinabi ng Lord, wag muna, wait ka muna, wag mong pilitin, tapos later on, si Lord pa yung isisisi mo, na hoo bakit mo niyaan to Lord? So, even if you're suffering now because you're waiting, remember, it's always better to suffer for waiting than to suffer for rushing. A couple of years ago, me and my wife, we went on the ultimate road trip together. We drove through like 18 states in America, we went to this general assembly of our church in Indianapolis. And you know, this was a long drive. But let me tell you the secret to our survival in this trip. And that is, after a long day of just hitting the road and, and I'm tired na, we would stop and we would rest. We would spend a night or I would do power naps. And yes, it takes waiting to do that. And that's what waiting is. We don't like it, but waiting is actually rest in disguise. Kung bakit single ka ba, pinagpapahinga pa ng Lord yung puso mo. Alam niyo mas nakakapagod kasi maghabol kaysa sa maghintay. Second reason why single ka pa, God is preparing you. Because your ability to love may depend on your ability to wait. So, waiting is preparing. Just be strong in the Lord. So, importante rin, hindi ka lang on hold. Pero ikaw ay nagpapamold. Mag-strive ka to be a godly single. Para balang araw, you can have a godly relationship. Charles Stanley said, you can either wait on God or wish you had. Mas maraming taong nagre-regret na sila ay masyadong nagmadali kesa nagre-regret dahil sila ay masyadong matagal naghintay. Third reason kung bakit single ka pa, God is preparing for you. God will supply all our needs. And pati na rin yung love life kasama dyan. Me, I think about my daughter. She's only two years old now. She's turning three this year. And already I'm thinking way beyond like her debut and even to her wedding day. And so sometimes I practice pa ako ng dance with my father again <laughs> and get teary-eyed. But I like to dream about my daughter getting married to a man who is godly, someone even better than me or even good looking but I say to myself wow if I have plans for my daughter someday imagine ninyo ang heavenly father natin sa bawat isa sa atin don't you think he has wonderful plans for us too and kung bakit ka pinaghihintay hindi dahil KJ siya God makes everything beautiful in its time meaning to say kapag nilabas mo yung sa time niya hindi na to beautiful angin na to God blesses those who wait when I think about the family that I have now, this is a product of waiting. Let me introduce to you my family real quick. That is my beautiful wife, Reese, right there, and our beautiful daughter, Naz, or Kalina Zareen. Before I courted her, I waited for a while, and then when it became us, we waited like four years, and then finally, we had forever. Hello, mga kamain! Ayan, may tawag na tayo sa mga viewers natin. Welcome to our channel. This is Minefield. Vlog number two. Here we go. Yes. Ano gagawin natin today? So, we will answer a question na madalas itanong kay PJ sa mga speaking engagements or sa Twitter, sa Curious Cat, or anywhere. Konti lang naman yung tatanong, Tino. Ayan. <laughs> so, what is this question that is frequently asked? Paano mo malalaman na siya na? I'm going to allow her to answer this question naman. So, paano? Paano nga ba? Madalas kasi nating marinig sa ibang tao or sa mga in love yung phrase na feeling ko siya na talaga kasi hindi na naramdaman ka sa kanya. It could be true, but how do you know if that person is really the one for you? Hmm. 
So, I listed down five reasons kung paano mo malalaman kung siya na, which was helpful for me. And baka maging helpful din sa inyo. So, number one is, that person is selfless. Number two is, hindi siya pakitan tao lang. Meaning, hindi lang siya mabait or sweet kapag nanliligaw sa inyong mga girls. Or hindi lang siya putting his best foot forward sa umpisa lang. It should be hanggang sa dulo. You will also see his or her true self with the way that person treats his family and friends. Number three is the timing is right for both of you. Sa'yo at sa kanya. No strings attached. Ibig sabihin, wala kayong ka-relationship or ka-MU na iba. Unlabeled, pero yes. sila naman talaga. And you are physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially ready. Number four ay alam mo yung value mo at alam din niya yung value mo. Ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Yung para bang alam mo hindi ka pang playtime or short time lang. Kasi alam mo that you are a prized possession. Kaya nga, mahal eh. Oo nga, no? Yeah. Mahal na mahal pa. Oh. <laughs> Lagi may ganun. <laughs> And number five, that person loves Jesus more than you. I agree. So, kung hindi niya kayang mas mahalin ng Lord kesa sa'yo, well, medyo mahirap yon. The person that can say, I love God more than you is the person that can love you most. That's true. Dahil saan pa ba natin matututunan magmahal, di ba? Kundi sa Lord lang. Paano kung nalaman na siya na? Unang-una, alam din niya na ako na. <laughs> Pangalawa, hindi ko na kailangan tanungin kung siya na ba? Maybe if you need to ask that question, hindi pa siya. Mm. Kadalasan sa mga nagtatanong ng tanong na to is people who are single or merong uh, naliligaw or may naliligawan, tapos doon sila in doubt. And if you have to ask kung siya na ba, maybe hindi pa siya or hindi pa time. Mm. Think about that. Pag si Lord naman nagbigay sa'yo, hindi mo na kailangan tanongin, Lord, share na ba? Basta makonfirm mo lang sa kanya na ito yung proper timing niya. At ito pa nga, the truth is, hindi siya talaga yung the one. O, at ako din, para sa kanya, hindi ako yung the one niya. Kasi para sa amin, si Lord ang the one. At siya naman, o sino man siya, siya yung the two. Kasi yung the one, ililid ka niya sa? The right two. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you for listening and watching. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. God bless. And then I remember also how we had to pray and wait till the proper time that we can have our daughter. You know what helps in guarding your heart? Aside prayer, there's also accountability. Mahalaga po yung you get godly advice or counsel. If you're going to buy a car, I want you to imagine you go to the dealership and you buy a car and you're so excited and then after you buy the car, you're like, okay, what do I do next? Kasi yun pala, hindi ka pa marunong mag-drive. Ano nga ba ang kailangan mauna? Bumili ng sasakyan or matuto mag-drive? I say, you learn how to drive first and then you buy yourself a car. It's like people who get themselves in a relationship. They get into a relationship and they're like, oh no, what do I do now? Hindi nila lang ang gagawin. So habang single ka pa, yun, dun ka pa lang mag-aaral din. And then also, of course, if you're gonna buy a car, you like to ask around, ano yung magandang sa sakin, ano yung babagay sa akin. So don't try to do it yourself when you have people who can help pray for you. I'll tell you why maraming tao hindi kumukuha ng accountability. Well, mahirap nga namang ipagpaalam yung may mali or ipaalam sa iba. I always like to say to the young people, if there's nothing wrong, then there's nothing to hide. Hindi naman kailangan gawin TNT, yung relationship, or tago kayo ng tago, kung tamang time na naman talaga. I remember some of our young people who took my advice and they ended up living happily ever after because magpapaalam sila bago sila manligaw, tapos yung naging sila na, nagpaalam din sila kung pwede na silang magpakasal, yung mga ganun. And they have our blessing and it's a wonderful thing to see. It's a really an awesome thing to see. Kung sa basketball, may double team. Kung yung puso natin, masyadong ala Kobe Bryant or Steph Curry or LeBron James, malupit. 
siguro double team na yan or even triple team uh, get your get your pastor involved and your other church mates para tulungan ka magbantay sa puso mong pasaway Hi, this is Tony Gonzaga and I go against the flu Third and last reason kung bakit kailangan mong bantay yung heart mo is your heart is the wellspring of life King Solomon says it's the wellspring because it's the source of everything else in your life. Your heart overflows into it, thoughts, words, and actions. Now, in Christianity, the heart symbolizes the center or core of our being, from which prayer and moral actions originate. If your heart is unhealthy, it threatens everything else. Family, friends, career, ministry, lahat. Kaya mahalaga yung, yung puso mo bantay sarado talaga. Huwag mong hahayaan may love to sa mga wrong na bagay. Because when it comes to bad romance, for instance, you gotta believe me when I say the best way to ruin your relationship with God is to be involved in the wrong relationship. I've seen it too many times happening in the 20 years I've been in the youth ministry. Active na active, on fire sa Lord, pero bigla na lang sa isang idlap na wala. Yung pala nakajowa. So you need to guard your heart from unfaithfulness. We need to ensure that we don't easily give away our affections into potentially harmful relationships or things. You keep your heart holy and healthy. Matthew 6.21 says, For wherever your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So, tatanungin kita, sino ba mas mahalaga sa'yo, tao or ang Diyos? You have to be sure talaga na si Lord ang number one love mo. At kung sino man siya, hindi siya yung the one, siya yung the two. Dahil si Lord lang ang the one. I think a lot of people, the reasons why their whole world come crashing down at naging depressed sila or even suicidal after a relationship has ended is because ginawa na nilang mundo yung tao. And so nung nawala na yung tao na yun, everything came tumbling down. But that is not the solid rock that's actually sinking sand that you put your foundation on. Dapat si Lord lang ang mamahalin mo ng buong puso, buong lakas, buong isip. And that kind of love cannot be tried to be given to ordinary people. Against the Flow You are still on Against the Flow brought to you by the Church of the Nazarene and this station. Can you guys please do us this quick favor if you have not done it yet? Can you please like our Facebook page? Sige na po, please! It's Against the Flow Radio. Just search it on Facebook. And we've also got Twitter. It's at Against the Flows. And our email address is weareagainsttheflow at gmail.com. You need to remember that our hearts were never designed to be followed, but be spirit-led. So I would say, contrary to the world saying that you follow your heart, no, don't follow your heart. Follow His. Ipapahama ka lang ng puso mo. Sometimes I wonder how come there are some people who don't want to change their ways. No matter how hard you try to explain to them. And I've come to the conclusion that there can be no change of mind unless there is a change of heart. In that verse in Jeremiah where it says that the heart is beyond cure, maybe that's why the Lord says in Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Let's make it our prayer that uh, our hearts will only be fully devoted sa Lord at sa Lord lamang. So, sawa ka na ba sa pagiging sawi dahil sa decisions ng iyong puso? In this world, kapag may problema ka sa puso mo physically, ang kailangan surgery, you know? kailangan mong ibigay sa mga medical experts sa doktor. And so, if your heart is badly damaged already from past relationships or past decisions, Kapatid, magpa-open heart surgery ka na sa Lord. Don't just guard your heart, but surrender it to the one who can heal it and guide it properly so that your life may be more blessed. Happy Hearts Day, everybody. I hope you guys were blessed with the message today. Yeah.